we are continuing with our story about Ramdas uh, Babaji. And as we knew, he was in the beginning called Radhika. And he had very beautiful experiences uh, through his life. And uh, I always remember that story. I mean, this always inspires me that when he was coming to Vrindavana, that Yoga Maya herself was with him on a train and she took him to the temple where actually it's Yoga Maya temple also. Yeah. And she showed himself to him, you know. So in a way he got the blessing of Yoga Maya. And we also should pray to Yoga Maya to give us the blessing that we can see Vrindavan, real Vrindavan, re real Radha Kund, you know? And after in the story, he came in Radha Kund, and there he got a vision of spiritual Radha Kund and himself as Manjari. So at that time he knew he he had realized his Manjari form. And that always stayed with him. We know that Ramdas Babaji met Radharaman Charandas Deva after, and he was so much inspired and attracted by him that he was following him everywhere. He always wanted to be with him. So, of course, this could last until uh, Radharaman Charandas Baba uh, went from this world. So, our story actually continues from that part. So, <clears throat> In 1905, Sri Radha Charandas Deva disappeared from the world to join the eternal Lila of Radha Krishna in celestial Vrindavana. At the time of his disappearance, he gave his karatal to Ramdas. Along with the karatal, he gave him Shakti power and entrusted him with the responsibility of preaching Harinama through Kirtana. So accordingly, he started preaching to, through Kirtana uh, with Kolkata as the center of preaching. His whole life was devoted to Kirtana. Apart from the Trisandhya Kirtana, meaning three times in day, Kirtana, which he performed every day, he went from place to place performing Kirtana in Harishab, Harishabas and the houses of devotees. On the dates on which Mahaprabhu or his companions performed any Leela in any particular place, he went to that place along with his disciples and the other devotees and performed kirtana relating to that particular lila. For example, he performed Ratha Yatra Kirtana in Jagannath Puri on the Ratha Yatra day, Danda Mahotsava Kirtana in Panihati this is on the day of Mahaprabhu's visit to, no, this is, sorry, this is the day on which Nityananda pra Prabhu performed this Danda Mahotsava. And, na, na, uh, yeah, Danda Mahotsava, this means when he broke his Danda, Goranga's Danda, and thrown in, in the river. And Nagar Kirtan in Vrindavana, on the day of Mahaprabhu's visit to Vrindavana. On the day of disappearance of a companion of Mahaprabhu, 
or an acharya or a devotee, he performed suchaka kirtana or the kirtana relating to the life of a saint on the anniversary of his disappearance. Thus, hardly a day passed when he did not perform some special kirtana. Radharaman also passed on to Raman, Ramdas his supernatural power of composing songs at the time of Kirtana. All the songs composed and sung by him at the time of Kirtana and noted down by his disciples are now published in three big volumes. So this is interesting to maybe try to find out those songs. Definitely I will search. <laughs> Uh, at the time of Kirtana, the Sattvika Bhavas all the, or the symptoms of Bhava that appeared on his body were also like the Sattvika Bhavas that appeared on the body of Radharaman Baba. So extraordinary symptoms. Tears streamed out of his eyes so profusely that the man had to sit by his side to wipe them. In horripilation, even the long hairs of his body used to stand erect. So, totally like horripilation on body. Tremor used to be so intense that it made the body invisible. <clears throat> Sometime he had tremor in one half of his body and stupor in the other half. So one was, side was trembling, other side was like paralyzed. Sometimes he was seen springing one foot above the ground while performing kirtana in sitting position. Even at the time of his routine worship of mantra smarana, he used to be sometimes so overwhelmed with bhava that it made him roar like a lion. And people who heard the sound at a distance understood that he was doing mantra smarana. <clears throat> Rad, uh, Ramdas Babaji had surrendered himself at the feet of Radha Raman Babaji Maharaj so completely that he did not have a separate existence of his own. He went about from place to place doing Sankirtana at his behest, on his behalf, and for his pleasure and by his Shakti. If by chance he had to face any opposition anywhere, he faced it fearlessly by his Shakti. So once he was invited by the people of Vishnupur on the occasion of Nama Yagya, which they had organized. Vishnupur had been a stronghold of Vaishnavas since the time of Raja Virahamavira, Virahamavira of Vishnupur. But at this time, there were a large number of people there who were against Kirtana and did not want that the people of Vishnupur should come under the influence of Ramdas Babaji. As soon as Ramdas Baba reached there with his party, the news went around that when his Kirtana procession would reach Lala Bandapa, the locality where the Yagya was going on, they would be beaten by opponents. So they had planned to beat them up. <clears throat> 
Advaita Das Baba, one of the companions of Ram Das Baba, said to him, Dada, have you heard? You will have to face a violent mob when your Kirtana reaches Labanda Pad tomorrow. Let us not go for Kirtana. Baba said, Who's Kirtana? Yours? Mine? Or Guru Devrada Raman's? On whose behalf have you come here for Kirtana? Pray to Gurudev or to Nitai Chand so that there may not be any disturbance in Kirtana. The next day, in the morning, Ramdas Baba started for Lala Bandapad, performing Kirtana with his party. He first invoked Radharaman and Nitai Chand with the sound of Karatals, then started singing in a loud tone. Bhajanitai go Radhe Shyam Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. The people of Vishnupur announced the beginning of Kirtana by blowing conch shells and ringing bells. Thousands of people began to come to join the Kirtana. As the Kirtana procession proceeded, flowers were thrown on it from either side of the road. The police had come to know about the possibility of violence. Therefore, arrangements were made for armed guards to he head the procession. <clears throat> when the procession reached near Lala, uh, Laban, Laban, uh, Labandapada, Everybody saw a large number of people standing at some distance with sticks, spears, and daggers, and shouting, Come, Nitai Go Radeshyam, we are here to teach your Nitai Go Radeshyam a lesson. The procession stopped. The police asked the mob to disperse, but they did not. The police warned that if they did not disperse, they would be fired at. Still, they kept on shouting violent remarks and slogans. <clears throat> the guards then started aiming their guns at them. Bullets were about to be fired when Ramadas Baba, who was still performing Kirtana, unmindful of what was happening, suddenly got inspired to break the police cordon and march on singing yet more loudly and passionately. Bhajanitai go Radhe Shyam Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. Everyone was surprised. The guns could not be fired because Baba came between the violent mob and the guns ready to fire. Baba made obeisance to the people who had come to attack him by lying prostrate on the ground. Then proceeded towards the stage on which the Nama Yagya was going on. There was not the slightest trace, trace of fear on his face. He was doing kirtana continuously. Tears of love were flowing down his eyes. He was so maddened with bhava that from time to time he shrieked aloud. His shrieks seemed to rend the sky and send thrill in the hearts of people round about. At that time, Sri just 
Uh, at that time, uh, you can hear me. Sorry, just I want to check. Yeah, okay. At that time, Sri Rishi Kaviraj, the chief organizer of Nama Yagya, came forward. Age. Amidst shouts of Hari Bol and the sounds of conch shells, the people who were inclined towards violence were also filled with bhava. So they joined the kirtana and began to sing and dance with others. <laughs> so this was from Sri Vinaya Bhushana Kavira, just uh, Sri. Guru Kata Prasanga book, pages 49 to 52. Okay, <clears throat> so very interesting. How, how actually, what is the power of Nitai Chand and Gurudev that really, if we have enough trust that we give ourselves to Nitai Chand, there is no need for fear. That's the point. Fear comes when we don't trust that we are always guided and protected by Nitai Chand. Sometimes it is difficult, I know. You know, sometimes some things happen in our life and we forget at the moment. And maybe we think, you know, is it really good for me? Because sometimes some things seem bad or not good for us that are happening. But our belief in our Radeshyam and uh, Nitai Chand and Gurudev can help us to understand that we are guided internally and externally and that all is happening to bring us closer to them sometimes we understand this after it happened after it is finished so in 1951 ramdas baba went to vrindavana with about 250 devotees to perform nagar kirtan on Kartika Purnima, the day on which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited Vrindavana. The author of Yal Kapoor, who lived in Agra at that time, also went to Vrindavana, probably uh, him, yeah, also went to Vrindavana to join the Nagar Kirtan with Dr. Gokul Narayan Vyas, professor of medicine in the Agra Medical College. Accidentally, Ramdas Baba fell ill. He had high fever, and this doctor, uh, or actually, sorry, uh, Dr. S.K. Das, the famous physician of Kolkata, who had come with him, advised him not to go for Nagar Kirtan that day. He agreed, but said that he would inaugurate the Nagar Kirtan or start the Nagar Kirtan and only and go only a few steps with the Kirtana party and then return. He remembered Sri Radha Raman and started Kirtana. Tears, tremor, and the other Sattvika Bhavas appeared on his body. He was so overpowered with Bhava that he forgot all about himself. He went on and on dancing and singing. No one had the courage to stop him. Kirtana started at 5 p.m. 
from the temple of Mahaprabhu. And going through Gopeshwar Mahadev, Rangaji's temple, Najaki Mandir, Banakandi, Sevakunj, and Imlitala, it returned to Mahaprabhu's temple at 11 p.m. All along, Baba was singing and dancing and shedding tears. He was 75 years old at that time. The author, author was 43 and Dr. Vyas about 50. Both Dr. Vyas and the author had to sit down at several places and take rest during the Nagar Kirtana. But Baba continued to sing and dance without any sign of fatigue for six hours, swimming in an ocean of bhava, such as we had never experienced before. The life of Ramadas Babaji Maharaj was a continuous stream of Harinama Kirtana. He had so identified himself with Harinama that all the Shakti of Harinama was his own. He could at will do anything that Harinama could do. He could cure diseases, remove the need, wants, and suffering of people, and even breathe life into the dead. His life is full, full of such acts of mercy upon people who came in contact with him. Uh, this is interesting because we know that uh, life of our Param Guru, Guru Dev's Guru Dev, yeah, and he also was helping people. I mean, many people were coming to him with many wishes, often material wishes, but he would bless them in that way. Of course, they only want to hear, mostly want to hear <laughs> that somebody wants to become a devotee, that they want to surrender themselves to their Ishtadev, they want to hear that. So, Ramdas Babaji was like that, and we will see just a few uh, situations where he was acting with mercy. So, once Baba was staying in Vishnupur at the house of his disciple, disciple Suchant Rakshita, telegraph message was received that Suchan's brother-in-law was admitted into a hospital on account of cholera. Immediately, Suchant went to Kolkata. On reaching the hospital, he saw that his brother-in-law was lying dead, and his people were waiting outside the hospital with a coat and garlands to carry the dead body. In Vishnupur, Suchan's old mother began to weep and yell and dash, dash her head against the ground in front of Baba. Baba was moved. He could not help saying, do not worry, he will be all right. So he said that to the uh, mother of the person who died. At that time, the dead body was being carried outside the hospital. The sweeper carrying the body saw that it was breathing. He ran and informed the doctor. The doctor was surprised. The patient soon recovered and went back home. Interesting. 
Baba Maharaj's disciple Haripat Kaviraj lived his last on the way. At that time, Ramdas Babaji was doing his morning puja in Kolkata. A disciple was helping him take the Charanamrita of various Thakurs, which he was accustomed to take at the time of puja. Suddenly, his eyes widened and he sat still with Charanamrita in his hand. The disciple said, Baba, take it. Baba replied, Oh, Goranga is going. I will not let him go before me. Simultaneously, Goranga Das opened his eyes. Um, open his eyes. Yeah, he, he, because in beginning it was mentioned uh, disciple Hari Patkavraj, so it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, so this is other Goranga Das opened his eyes and his condition began to improve. He lived for one more year and passed away only 15 days after Ram Das had left his body. So actually this is other disciple, Goranga Das, who was dying, but by mercy he lived longer than Ram Das Baba. It was not only towards his disciples that Ramdas Babaji was merciful. His heart even melted for his enemies and for the most degraded souls. Once Baba was resting in the drawing room of Suchand Rakshit in Vishnupur, after performing Kirtana somewhere in the neighborhood. His companions were resting in an adjoining house. At that time, a drunkard whose name was Kulamani Acharya and who was inimical towards Vaishnavas came in the disguise of a Vaishnava sadhu singing a song, caricaturing the Vaishnavas, imitating a Vaishnava sadhus, like making caricature, and dancing, gestic gesticulating, and playing a musical instrument called Kanjani, or small drum, and the song said, I am a Vairagi, or renun renun renunciate. You know why? My wife died, and my son, I came to Vrindavana, now, what a fun in Krishna Bhajana. De uh, dainties to eat of all kinds, women, women to serve at all times, my days in merriment pass by. Now king of kings am I. Suchan Rakshita could not tolerate this kind of caricature of Vaishnava Sadhus. He dealt such a strong blow at the nose of the singer that his nose began to bleed. Other devotees also came running and shouting, hold him, beat him. Ramdas Baba heard them shouting, he came out and said, holding the singer close to his breast, Do not beat him. He has assumed the Vesha or cloth of a Vaishnava sadhu. The Vesha, which is sacred, which has enabled many to cross the ocean of Maya. Putana had attained Krishna only by account of her Vesha because he, she was acting as his mother, respect the Vesha. Instead of beating him, glorify him, 
so that you may be blessed with this Vesha and attain Krishna by doing bhajana according to the Vesha. On hearing this, everyone, everyone began to take the dust of the feet of Kulumani, Kulamani Acharya. Kulamani fell at the feet of Baba and said, Oh Baba, you are no other than Nityananda. Kindly deliver me from the bondage of Maya. He said so and began to weep. Baba also brought tears in his eyes. He consoled him and with his own hands washed his nose. The next day, Kulamani again came to Baba. His head was, sh was shaved and he wore Tulsi Kanti in his neck and Tilaka on his forehead. He fell at Baba's feet and wept and prayed for Vesha Ashraya. Baba gave him mantra and asked Baba Gopaldas to give him Vesh. After Vesh, his name was Krishna Kinkaradas. Krishna Kinkaradas went to Vrindavana and began to live in the temple of Sri Vajendra Goswami and do Seva and Krishna Bhajana. By the grace of Baba, he was not only reformed, but set firmly on the path of bhakti. How this is actually beautiful story. Uh, it shows, I remember before, you know, they taught, th teach us like, oh, these are devotees, those are karmis, you know, making distinction between people and uh, talking, uh, using some bad names for anyone who was not in the process of bhakti. But we should respect everyone. And many times we talked about this, that it, it would be beautiful to see in their hearts our Ishtadev. Radha and Krishna are in everybody's hearts. So if we try to see in that way, we can have respect for everyone. And we have no idea, really no idea who is that person, even if that person at the moment is acting badly. At the moment, his own delusion, illusion, but at the moment, he's acting badly. Tomorrow, he can be Vaishnav saint. So we have no idea. That's why we should act with respect towards everyone. Once, once in Baba's ashrama, the costly watch, hand watch, of Sri Dulal Babu of Kolkata was stolen. The watch was found in the suitcase of a man named Nagarvashi. Advaita Das Baba said to Baba Maharaj, Dada, it is not safe to keep to keep such a thief in the ashrama. Turn him out. But Baba said, I have been asked by Gurudev to accept, not to reject. I have to live with all kinds of people, whether good or bad. Baba used to say, if we come to know that a man is fallen, and turn him out or chase him away because he is fallen. Who will keep him? We must keep him with us and reform him. It was for the deliverance of the fallen that Nitai Chan's heart used to weep. So we see how he was thinking. So once a beggar 
suffering from leprosy of virulent type came to Baba's ashram and asked for food. At that time, ev everyone in the ashrama had taken his food except Baba. His prashad was kept aside in a plate. He put the plate before the beggar and he ate as much as he could and left the rest. Baba ate the, has eaten the remaining prashad without any hesitation or feeling of abhorrence, meaning feeling like bad for this, that he is eating somebody else's remaining food. The inmates of the ashrama shivered to see him eating the remnants of the leper, but no one had the courage to say anything to him. This not only provided an instance of Baba's ever-flowing mercy towards even the most fallen of all the jivas, it also provided an instance of, of having Chinmaya Bhudi towards Bhagavad Prashad, meaning regarding the Prashad as Chinmaya or spiritual. So, meaning it cannot be touched by material things. The Shastra says that the Prashad is never defiled because it is Chinmaya or spiritual. A man who thinks otherwise is doomed. Once when Baba was staying in Samajabadi uh, in Navadvip, a drunkard came to him. When he was dead drunk, he fixed his eyes at him and said, You are Ramadas Baba. I am Upenadut. <laughs> it's really written like this. I have murdered many people. See how many scars of dagger I have on my back. With this, he turned his back towards Baba. He, he turns his back towards Baba. Then, coming forward towards Baba, he said, You Ramdas, correct? I Upenaduta and fell at Baba's feet. As he did this, the two bottles of liquor he was holding under his armpit fell and broke. Liquor was scattered all over. The sadhus and the Goswamis sitting near by, nearby receded backwards, but Baba Maharaj did not move. The drunkard began to roll on the ground, smeared with liquor and cry. You Ramdas Baba, correct? Will you not deliver me? I Upenaduta. Some of the sadhus began to think of calling the police. Baba kept on silently watching the drunkard and looking at him piteously. Tears were flowing from his eyes and he, his body was trembling. Suddenly he shouted, Anitai! And with both hands made the drunkard stand. The drunkard let his head fall on Baba's chest. Baba began to walk with him. The drunkard went a few steps and fell. Then Baba pressed the point between the two eyebrows on his forehead with the fingers of his right hand and uttered some mantra. 
While he was saying this mantra, the drunkard lay quietly as he was asleep. After some time, he opened his eyes and began to look around like one confused, stupefied. Baba again made him stand and throwing his arm around him like his brother began to walk with him. His disciples kept on looking. No one had the courage to say anything. He went out of the ashrama with him and proceeded towards Shrivas Ananga Ghat. Lalita Saki asked the sadhu to accompany him. Babaji Maharaj had not yet taken prasad, so everyone kept waiting for him. But he returned in the evening after the evening arati. The drunkard came with him. He had completely changed. He wore a tilaka on his forehead and a tulsi kanti around his neck. Baba had made him wear one of the kantis he wore himself. He was calm, <coughs> calm, tranquilized, and subdued, and was walking with head cast down, like one found guilty of committing some serious offense. But he was no more Upena Dutta, but Upenda, the god brother of the disciples of Baba. How beautiful that nobody is outside of mercy. Everybody deserves mercy. Because Nittai Chant doesn't look, he does not look the bad things person did. He wants to give love. He wants to give Radha and Krishna to them. So this should be also our way of looking. Without criticizing anyone, everybody is in the mercy and everybody deserves mercy. So one way always when, if we are feeling some bad feelings towards anyone, we could always change and pray, not just for that person, but for our self, that our hearts become pure and that we have this divine vision to see Radha and Krishna in everyone's heart, to see Nitai Chand, that that should be our prayer when we catch ourselves thinking bad about someone. Babaji Maharaj was once invited by the devotees of Aramabhag in district Vardamana for Asta Prahar Kirtana. After getting down from the train at Vardamana station, when he was going on foot with his 30 disciples to Aramabag, it was raining and the way was slippery. <clears throat> but they were going on performing kirtana. Suddenly the rain became torrential, was falling so strongly. The way was filled with knee-deep water. They had to take shelter in the veranda of the thatched cottage of an old lady outside Aramabak. Kirtan began to be performed at a higher pitch. The sound of drums and karatals rent the sky. The devotees of Aramabak who were going to receive them also came there and joined the kirtana. 
they saw that Baba Maharaj was completely lost in Kirtana. It, it was so intensive and it was not possible to take him to Aramabad. So this, they decided to hold the Astra Prahar Kirtana at the cottage itself. Sometime after arrangements for Kirtana were made under a swiftly improvised canopy in the courtyard of the cottage. So the next day, many people came from Aramabag and joined the Kirtana. The old lady was an outcast from society because she had been adulter adulterous in her young age. No respectable person had ever visited her. She was leading a miserable life in her old age. The fire of penitence always burned in her heart. But today, providence has suddenly smiled on her. Her cottage was turned into a temple for Kirtana. The Ashtra Prahar Kirtana Yagya purified her heart and marked the beginning of a new chapter, chapter in her, her life. She took initiation from Baba and was named Satyadasi. She sold her property and went to Vrindavana to lead the life of a devotee. Very beautiful. Erade. Once Baba Maharaj was going to Puri to participate in Ratha Yatra, he sat with his companions in a reserved compartment at the Haura station. Someone stole the suitcase of his disciple Srinanda Baba. I think we read this story in one other part. The suitcase contained 2,300 rupees collected by the devotees for Ratha Yatra. A well-dressed person, looking like a gentleman, had stolen the suitcase. After some time, he was caught by the police and brought before Baba with the suitcase. The police wanted Baba to lodge a report against him. But Baba was standing quietly and looking piteously at him. Tears were coursing down his eyes. The thief shivered to see him and fell at his feet. Baba came to know about his real condition. He said to one of his god brothers painfully, He is in trouble. He does not have money to go anywhere. So, interesting. Second. So, after. He, he became absorbed, and his absorption was apparent from sattvika bhavas that constantly adorned his body. He had forgotten all about himself and the... Oh, one second. Some text was mixed here. Mm-hmm. Okay, this person actually fell at his feet, and in the end, uh, he gave him the money. And after giving him money, 
he and his companions went and sat in the train. The train left, and there was nobody to report against him. Yeah. So actually, they let him go and helped him in the same time. Yeah, the text was a little mixed, so I couldn't catch it here. Uh, the story, next story, the story of Naya Natar Devi of Sonamuki City is also an example of Baba Maharaja's mercy upon the fallen and the sinful. So Naya Natar Devi came of a respectable Brahmin family of Sonamuki. All the members of her family were educated. She was also highly educated. She was married to the only son of a rich man of Varanasi, who was learned but not handsome. Naya Natar did not like him. She ran away with the son of a goldsmith. The goldsmith's son took her to Delhi, Agra, Lucknow, and several other places. Finally, he took her to Kolkata. He lived with her there for some time and then gave her up. She was obliged to go back to her parents, but she was not well received in the family. After some time, she went to Bankura and began to live like a prostitute in a locality where the prostitutes lived. Once uh, Baba Maharaj happened to pass through that locality while he was out for Nagar Kirtana, he looked at her piteously and mercifully. His glance touched her heart. There was a total change in her. The next day, she took initiation from Baba, distributed all her wealth amongst the prostitutes, shaved her head, and went to Vrindavana with a single dhoti, which she had on her body. For a long time, no one knew anything about her. So, I will stop here with the reading. So, we can see, especially in these latest stories, how actually devotee is merciful, how real saints are merciful to everyone. And this is so, so beautiful so beautiful and we can learn from these examples how to act what vision to have when we see other people that sometimes i mean it's natural in a way that in this world people have uh, ideas about someone else even without knowing those people but we should train ourselves to think differently to think that everybody is in their own way guided by nita chant i i don't believe that uh, nita gore just came that time and it's finished no we know that their teaching their kripa is still here and still going on and we can always pray to have that kripa to dive into that kripa and that kripa is always present actually we just need to turn ourselves towards that kripa, like a radio and the radio station, you know, that if we want to 
catch the correct radio station, we need to attune the radio to receive. That doesn't mean that radio station doesn't exist until we attune ourselves. It's there. Kripa is there. But when we attune our station, our radio, to receive that station, then the Kripa comes, enters. Yeah? And this attunement starts in our heart and then mind, intelligence, but first from the heart, by our focus, where the focus goes, energy flows, yeah? So our focus on our Ishtadev, and from that, everything else starts to happen. So thank you very much for listening today. Next time, we will continue with uh, the story of Ramdas Baba. And I think we have just little from this story. Then we will start the next one. So thank you again. And Rade Rade.